So what we're going to do now is we're going to go back to this generic nucleophilic ACL substitution mechanism. That is a super, super generic version of this reaction. What I'm going to do is give you a slightly more detailed but still generic nucleophilic ACL substitution reaction. This reaction can occur under two different conditions. We can either have this reaction taking place in a basic solution or an acidic solution. So we're going to start with basic nucleophilic acyl substitution. And I'm actually going to use a real molecule. I'm going to use an acid chloride. And I'm going to use a real nucleophile. But this, this is a very generic mechanism that we'll be able to apply to any derivative and any basic nucleophile. First thing that happens in this reaction is the nucleophile attacks our carbonyl carbon and opens up the carbon oxygen double bond and we create an intermediate a negative charge on the oxygen, the chlorine is still attached, and we have added our nucleophile to the carbonyl carbon. The next thing that happens is the carbon oxygen double bond closes back up, and we kick off the chlorine, in this case, as a leaving group. And so here we've done substitution. This whole reaction is in equilibrium like all of these reactions are, but it's easier for me to just draw the forward arrows. So again, this is the reaction that takes place under basic conditions. As a good rule of thumb, when you are operating under basic conditions, so if the nucleophile is basic, and you'll know that it's basic because it will have a formal full-on negative charge, throughout your mechanism, all of your intermediates must be either neutral in terms of their charge or also have a negative formal charge. But you can't have any positively charged intermediates at all in the basic nucleophilic mechanism. So now let's look at the acidic mechanism. Acidic, nucleophilic, acyl substitution. And we are going to use the same acid chloride as our reactant. Acidic nucleophilic uh, substitution reactions have to start with an acid catalyst. So there, we're going to draw this reaction starting with H3O+. And like we've seen many, many times, when you are doing an acidic reaction, the very first thing that's going to happen is the acid protonating the oxygen, in this case, the carbonyl oxygen. So the first thing that we're going to get is a protonated acid chloride. And once that is, once the, the carbonyl group is protonated, then you can bring in your actual nucleophile. And so I'm going to use a, a methanol molecule, which is the acid version of methoxide that I used in the, the first mechanism. The lone pair of electrons on the nucleophile are going to attack the carbonyl carbon, and we're going to open up the carbon oxygen double bond. So this will give us. A molecule. Now we have four bonds to that carbonyl carbon. We have a positive charge on the O, the H O M E that we just added. Our next step is to address the positive charge on the oxygen. So we're going to use something else. Like, for example, we could use the water molecule that was created 
when we did the very first step, this step up here, we created a water molecule. So we're gonna use that water molecule and we'll use that to deprotonate. And this will take care of the positive charge on the oxygen. Like that. The next thing that we're gonna see happen is remaking the carbon oxygen double bond and getting rid of our leaving group. Our leaving group is the chlorine. We're gonna have a positive formal charge on the oxygen. The chlorine is gone, so we've completed the substitution. And the last thing that happens is gonna be another deprotonation of the oxygen, the positive charge on the oxygen. So we're gonna use something else. Uh, we could use water again if we wanted. Doesn't really matter what we're using to do these deprotonations with. And we're finally done. As you can see, this is a much more tedious mechanism than the basic mechanism. So we're gonna make another general statement. If our nucleophile is acidic, and this means that it's either going to be a positive charge or it'll be neutral, one or the other, all intermediates in this reaction must be either neutral or positively charged.